It is the night session of this 2021 Division II Men's Basketball Championship. Quarterfinal number three, the champions in the house. It's been a long wait to defend the national title from 2019, but the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State begin that quest in the Elite Eight tonight against the always entertaining high-flying offense of the Hilltoppers of West Liberty. With Tully Bevilacqua, I'm Will Haskett. Welcome you into the Ford Center here at Evansville, Indiana. And once again, the top scoring team in the country, no surprise. The running Hilltoppers, but what a test tonight. Second seed in the reseed, the Bearcats trying to make it three titles in the last four playings of this championship. And we are underway here in Evansville. Well, in game one, we had Lincoln Memorial score 90. We had West, West Texas AM score 97. Can we hit that milestone of 100 tonight? Well, if it's going to happen, West Liberty is a team that can mm -hmm. often deliver that. There you see the quick drive. Bryce Butler gets in the scoring. It'll be the 13th time in the last 16 years that the Hilltoppers will lead the nation in scoring. They pick up with that full court press. The baseball pass deep leads to a wild throwback as the Bearcats break that frantic pressure and have to be, you know, obviously knowing the scout, everybody knows the, the long time history what Jim Crutchfield began with the Hilltoppers, what Ben Howlett has continued playing the system but trying to stay true to what you do as a team as well as Butler comes away with the steal and the Hilltoppers look for basket number two. Well, they've started off well, both offensively and defensively being active with their hands. Bolin driving, two All-Americans going at each other, Dalton Bolin and Trevor Hudgens. Hudgens blocked that one. The three missing from no. Robinson. The hustle keeping that ball alive, but last touched by Robinson following his own miss and the ball back to the Bearcats. Well, that was a good second effort, though. You, you appreciate that kind of effort. Missed the shot, but went after his own rebounds. As the Hilltop is set up in this full court press. At a frantic pace. I would imagine most people tuning into the broadcast tonight certainly aware of what this Hilltoppers program has done, mm -hmm. making it sixth Elite Eight since 2010. Champions, defense, high flying as that one from Ryan Hawkins drives down the lane to tie it up at two apiece. You've got some significant scorers on the floor for West Liberty, including their leading scorer, Dalton Bolin, who is approaching 2,300 points in his career. That's him with the ball. He leaves it out. Luke Dyer long three, and as they do often, they will connect from distance. 242 made three-pointers this year for West Liberty. They shoot it at a 37% clip. Again, have th four players averaging in double figures and seven players averaging over seven points a game. And they're not looking to use up too much time on the shot clock. As we saw, see Bernard responding there on the other end with two points of his own. Robinson. Bumped there, foul on Bernard. Good traveling crew for both of these teams, especially for the Bearcat faithful who have made this drive multiple times before over this incredible run of the last couple of years. The champions in 2019, they won it right here on this floor. 2017 national champions as well. Bolin rises and hits from three. Oh, the Hilltoppers have started off well with shooting from the perimeter. Two of three from the beyond the three-point arc. Again, a West Liberty team that has been here as well. Their national runner-up run in 2014 came on this floor, eventually losing to Central Missouri. As inside the restricted zone, no, able to maintain position. Bernard called for the offensive foul. <laughs> Let's see if we get the replay here. Bernard, yes, defense definitely set outside the defensive circle there. That was an easy call to make. So a good offensive start and good defense from West Liberty. Again, the Hilltoppers at 102 points per game, but they surrender 79.8 on the season. So if they can turn things up defensively against arguably one of the top two or three programs in the country, here in the opening of this game could certainly change some things. That should be a travel and mm -hmm. is as Elijah Watson stepped through and dragged that back foot. But a good start here for the Hilltoppers up 
by four early, and now here come the wholesale substitutions, and that's how this team rolls. I love hearing the comments from head coach Ben Hallett. You know, when you score 100 plus points a game, you're up, you're pressing, moving in fresh bodies, staying fresh. He says it's easy from a recruiting standpoint. Everybody thinks they want to play in this system. Then they get here and understand the learning that it takes, the buy-in that it takes. It's easier said than done to be one of the more unique programs in all of college basketball. And on the other side, you're playing against a program mm -hmm. that just finds ways to win and win and continue winning. Well, and to be successful, you have to have everybody buy in because it just takes one person to kind of like not be totally in to break the whole system up. Bowling missing from the outside. Now the pressure, pressure trying to fluster Alexander as he brings it up. You can see McKinney face guarding Hudgens. Obviously, they're trying to limit his touches as much as possible. Drove it in deep and named an All-American again this week. They're overplaying on Hudgens. Mm -hmm. Instead, it's Hawkins from deep. He's actually their leading scorer. Good offensive reset. Waters goes back strong. He can't connect. Lots of contact. Ball punched out, and it'll be a fourth reset in this possession for the Bearcats. And Hudgens is fouled out top by Zach Rasil. And that will lead us to our first time out. But a good efficient offensive start for West Liberty. More impressively, the defensive side is the Hilltoppers with the early edge in this first evening quarterfinal matchup. And nearly five minutes into the first half of our third quarter final matchup, West Texas A&M, Lincoln Memorial already in the semifinals on one half of the bracket. And the nightcaps now between West Liberty and Northwest Missouri State. It'll be Flagler and Truman coming up to finish things up in Evansville. That's two quick fouls on Rasil. Rasil has to be careful because this he's getting right up on the offensive player, but the Bearcats are able to drag that foul out it's one thing to put pressure on but you've also got to understand the the speed of your opponent as well and when they're a quick play you might have to back off just that half a step and on the drive hawkins was fouled body checked there all the way to the rack by marlon moore jr hawkins able to get into the middle of the keyway, you see it was a clean walk, but the, the body contact was what they called it for. Yeah, the left arm kind mm -hmm. of riding the body of Hawkins. First team all MI double A, and the all, all defense as well. He's also a 2,000 point scorer. We've got multiple 2,000 point scorers in this game on both sides of the ledger. A couple there for Hawkins at 22 points per game. And there's nothing that the Bearcats haven't seen or been tested by over the course of the last couple of years that are going to get them in any sort of serious trouble here in Evansville. And See, the Bearcats are trying their own defensive pressure. That's right. Kind of making the Hilltoppers speed up their offense then. Dyer just going a little bit too fast, trying mm -hmm. to get into the lane. Player who's... Got plenty of Elite Eight experience in his own right, graduate fifth year player. Now the pressure broken, numbers here if you push the issue, but Dreamer backs it out for a moment. Into the hands of Isaiah Jackson and now Hudgens who's looking to get involved offensively. The defense is really keyed on him. He's yet to put a shot up here in the opening five minutes. Hawkins settled the ball. Now Dyer's able to run it down. Well, Hudgens didn't really use the screen on that occasion. I was expecting a little bit more of an attacking play off that pick and roll. Good overplay. Hawkins comes in, snaps it away. Hudgens with it. Sees the double coming and breaks out of it. Hawkins drew the defense. Dreamer didn't want the three. 
at six sevens. Hawkins is extremely mobile. You can see he can handle the ball well from the perimeter. And now he's down in the low block going one on one. No defensive help comes and just spins and kisses it off the glass for two. Yeah, made easy work of Bryce Butler, who's mm -hmm. given up two inches in you know, about 20, 25 pounds in that matchup in the post. Robinson drives, had it poked away, and it'll stay here with the Hilltoppers. Again, Hawkins what, making his, or playing in his 129th game in his career for the Bearcats and increasing his own program record as Bolin works through the, a bunch of white jerseys to lay <laughs> with the left hand. Some screen the screen action on that inbound play. We see a lot of that inbounds offensive set played, but turnover here, that full course press causing a little bit of trouble, but. Yeah, the pressure paying off yep. and then Jackson committing the foul. So again, what that pace can do. The Bearcats needing to find sure-handedness here against that pressure. That is turnover number four already here in the early going for Northwest Missouri State. Typically, the Bearcats turning it over less than 11 times per game. Now, with the pace and mm -hmm. the full court pressure, if you can end up in a game around that average, you're going to be in really good shape against West Liberty, which forced you know, about 17, 16, 17 turnovers a game this year in the 24 contests. You know, the Hilltoppers are doing a good job, even if they're not coming away with the steal. What they're doing is making the Bearcats use up quite a bit of their shot clock, just getting the ball down and then having to get set into an offensive play. Hudgens took a long time to deliver to Hawkins. He tries to work it back in. Nice quick flip and a foul whistled as Alexander went up for it and he was hacked and will head to the line. Well, defense just caught watching then. Uh, watching Hawkins back it down and uh, lost sight of their own player. I should say Alexander on the end of that great flip pass. Bolin picks up the foul. That's his first. Two free throws made by Alexander, who has been so effective in this NCAA tournament. Actually just had a, with his lone miss so far of the night, and a field goal streak snapped, dating back to the end of the regular season in this first start of the postseason, that missing. The Bearcats trying to draw even or perhaps even take the lead. Well, Alexander, he's coming off. A fine performance in his previous game, having 21 points and three steals and five rebounds. So confidence will be up. Only averages six points for the season. Step back, three is blocked as Hudgens is looking for any room to operate. Lob over the top. Robinson thought about the three. And every player on the floor, a threat to shoot at Bowling from inside the arc. That was perhaps uncalled for. And the rebound off to mm -hmm. the Bearcats. I'm sure if he could have had that play back again, he may not have forced that shot up. And a hand check on Hazel Baker. Trying to deny Hawkins and then pushed him off of his line. That is the fifth foul against West Liberty. So a lot of time still to go here in the first half and both teams racking up the personals. Go coast to that's just great transition, just really pushed it. They secured the rebound. 
And a clean block <laughs> on the other end. Jackson denying the drive of Pat Robinson. He got, touched it last. But some nice momentum building for the Bearcats. Again, they have seen it all. They have been tested. They know what it takes. And certainly no early issues yet. Look at Jackson rising as the Bearcats with their first lead. Substitutions Northwest Missouri State, its first lead of the evening. As the champs trying to defend the title that they still hold from 2019, will have possession of the ball and a two point lead here in the first half of this third quarter final in a postseason that has had many tests for the Bearcats. They lost to the one team that's really had their number all year long, Washburn, in the MIAA tournament a one-point nail-biter then avenge that loss and by avenging it I mean with absolute authority dispatching of them 85 44 to get the post NCAA postseason started and then had to come way back as Hawkins nails the triple to make it a five-point edge come way back against Northern State force the game into overtime in the regional final so again when we say this is a team that is tested and on a mission and now winners of 40 straight games on neutral floors. That ball poked away. Alexander got a hand on it. Up comes Hudgens, who has not scored. And Hawkins will pull it back out. Well, Northwest Missouri, they have really upped the ante in the intensity. And Hawkins has been one of the main reasons for that. He has 11 points offensively. He's been instigating a lot of what's going on out there, as we see again. <laughs> Hudgens getting on the scoreboard for the first time. Able to work through the defense. 11 straight Bearcat points. Well, the Hilltoppers have gone a little bit cold now offensively. And you can see them rushing a little bit with the intensity that the Bearcats have created. You can see Ben McCollum going absolutely nuts on the sideline, loving the defensive intensity. Mm -hmm. Hudgens was camped out, parked under there with a tent to draw the offensive foul on the other end, showing off yes. the dexterity as he got under it. And then right here, I mean, tons of time to set up and draw that contact from McKinney driving through. And he couldn't believe the call, but it was about as obvious of a charge call as you were going to see, not just the momentum sort of carrying through. Now Hudgens is on the proper side of the defense. Again, so balanced, so strong, mm -hmm. good defensively, good offensively. Even the sluggish start, manageable. First three-point attempt by Hudgens. I should say the second one misses. One of the best in the country. In fact, number one entering the day in terms of three-point shooting at nearly 53% this year. That three, though, is pure. Luke Dyer snaps the 11-0 run and makes the first field goal for West Liberty in over... Two minutes. Well, the Bearcats not really having too much trouble now getting through this full court press. Starting to settle down now in their offensive flow. And this man here, he's starting to get going. Hawkins thought about the long trigger, got away with a travel, instead dumped it <laughs> off, and it's rolled through by Henry Alexander. Alexander. Byron Alexander with the finish. And that quick timeout called after that made bucket. Six point edge for the Bearcats. And again, their patience really paying off, finding more room in the defense over the last several minutes. That's right. And also the players are being active on the perimeter as well, as we saw then. Defense getting caught watching what Hawkins was doing. And Alexander making a nice cut to the basket. Timeout called by Northwest Missouri State, so Ben McCollum wanting to set the defense as well. Sensing the momentum in this game mm -hmm. shifting a bit. We've seen two quarterfinals already today that were somewhat tightly contested the game's first five to eight minutes, and then the better team just pulling away late in the first half and sort of turning the second half into a, a mild co semifinal coronation. Will the two seed be able to keep it 
all chalk so far today. The top seed West Texas A&M and the fourth seeded Lincoln Memorial have advanced as that one misses. Again, this drought for West Liberty, just one made field goal in their last seven shot attempts. Jackson got the step, but was poked away, blocked by Marlon Moore. Well, Jackson was able to get down the middle of the keyway there, but Marlon Moore using that length of his timing that perfectly not fouling. Hawkins dumped it off, spin, Alexander steps through, no, and Bolin bear hugs the rebound and got fouled on the way down. That'll be the fourth foul against the Bearcats. Six have been whistled against West Liberty, so Northwest Missouri State's shooting free throws the rest of the way in the first mm -hmm. half as well as they get Luke Waters with the personal. And they'll have to have some defensive discipline now because there's a lot of time left in this first, first half. Butler to Bolin. Bolin having to deal with Alexander. Defense doing a good job of just locking them down, keeping them out on the perimeter, but that's a tough shot there by Robinson. Robinson the third. 20 we, points a game for mm -hmm. Robinson. And now we got a foul whistled. This will be interesting to see if they call it on the offense. The West Liberty, number one. We're going to get Malik McKinney maybe with a hold. So it's the seventh foul, so there will be free throws for the Bearcats, but they will come after a timeout. West Liberty trying to find its footing after a good start has given way to a Bearcats run. As he step aside here in Evansville. Maybe not the offensive numbers that we expected in this game so far, but a good battle nonetheless. Northwest Missouri State led by as many as seven. And the one and one bonus out of the timeout with Trevor Hudgens at the line. A lethal free throw shooter, 89% on the year. The 20 point a game score. And Hudgens, they've not needed his offense in the first half, but you know that it's only a matter of time before he gets going. That's just his third point. 11 points from Ryan Hawkins to lead the way for the Bearcats. Well, you can see by the fact that he does have a player basically face guarding him when he is in offense. It just goes to show the respect that they have given him. But Hawkins has done a great job of carrying the bulk of the offense so far for the Bearcats. Robinson wildly through. Good job by Isaiah Jackson to kind of get out of the way, let Robinson make his own mistakes, and then leads it off to Hudgens on the fast break. West Liberty trying to answer and a reach in before the contact in the paint. Will be the fifth team foul against the Bearcats. Waters called with it. As we see this fast break, Hudgens had a step ahead of Bowen there. And that was just a, an easy transition there for the Bearcats to make. And now a hold on West Dreamer. So that's the six. So now both teams will be shooting free throws on every whistle the rest of the way. It bodes well for the Bearcats, an 80% free throw shooting team. And we're going to get another one. We've got a little bit undisciplined right now. Both defenses giving up some cheap fouls. Coaches won't be too happy about that because now, like you said, both teams are going to the free throw line on every whistle. So Dreamer picks up two fouls without the clock moving mm -hmm. and exits and also puts West Liberty at the line, Pat Robinson 76% free throw shooter, earns the bonus. And the Hilltops were starting to struggle a little bit offensively. And so this is not what you want to do. Put them on the free throw line where, as you said, the, the, shot, the clock stops, but they can get some easy buckets. 
Also allows him to set up the pressure. Mm -hmm. Jackson beats it. Could use the body. Dyer got to the spot first. Hodgins, Hodgins just probing. <laughs> just waiting, biding yeah. his time. It was like he was baiting the defense there, and he used his hesitation dribble and kind of just caught his defense flat-footed and used, used that change of speed to get by there. And I think his shooting numbers often overshadow his all-around scoring abilities at getting to the basket. Good strong rebound by mm -hmm. Alexander. Here comes Hudgens in the open floor. Thought about the three again, drove into space, drew a triple team and a beautiful dump off. He'll get the assist to Luke Waters and the first double digit advantage of the night. And that's just unselfish play by Hudgens right there. He could have forced that shot up. He got deep into the keyway, but he did have a couple of defenders to deal with. So that's just great team play right there. Butler had a wide open layup and gave it off to Robinson and the rebound saved away. Up comes Jackson, oh, excuse me, Alexander didn't have numbers, kicks it back out. Hudgens, there it is, the first three of the night. Timeout by West Liberty. Four straight made baskets by Northwest Missouri State. And Ben Howlett could not watch any longer. Just a systematic breakdown of offensive and defensive execution right now by the Bearcats. And we mentioned that Hudgens didn't need to do anything early. Well, he's doing it all now. You know, and he's doing it without forcing the issue. He's making good decisions with the ball in his hand. He's taking the shot when he's open, but he's also being that facilitator when he's getting that defensive pressure. And we've spoken about the two games prior to this one, how in that the second half of the first half, we've seen the team separate themselves. It's the same script. Mm -hmm. which is two different teams right now. And for West Liberty, now surrendering seven consecutive points to the opponent in just the last minute of game action. Have to find something here. Team is three of 10 from three-point range, but five turnovers. Driving through the lane, knifing through the defense, and a great drive by Robinson. Well, if you're looking for a bucket to be had, then he's the man that you want the ball in the hands of as he does a great job there deflecting the inbound pass. That will force the inbound from Jackson. He'll be stuck on the spot now after having that one deflected. The Hilltoppers have to find ways to steal some points, turn some turnovers into mm -hmm. scoring opportunities, get the Bearcats uncomfortable. It looked like Northwest Missouri, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, that might be too harsh of a word, but it looked like a team that was certainly still trying to figure out what they wanted to do in this game in the early going, and now seem much more comfortable, though that time Hudgens sped up a little bit and not on the same page as Alexander. Fifth turnover for the Bearcats. One of the few times that we've seen Hudgens Commit an unforced error. Butler could not get it back to Moore. Bolin. There's really no spacing right now. Long two rims out. And Alexander climbs the ladder. I should say Jackson gets up for it. He gets that <laughs> shot rattles home for Hawkins. Thought he had a foot on the line. They call it a three. Official was standing right on top of it. So Hawkins with his second three of the evening. To answer on the other end, that one missing from Dyer, but the putback by Moore. On that previous three for the Bearcats, I was about to say, I thought Jackson had a layup then, but just very unselfish team as we see. That's a goal 10. Yep. Over the top, Waters will get credited with the bucket. And there's room on the back side of this pressure defense if you know where to look. Take a look out see, here on the yep. wing. Yeah, there's no Ooh. doubt his foot was on yep. the line. Not sure if they'll have a chance at a timeout to go back and look at that one, but I'm not sure if anybody in the gymnasium was really even questioning the call. 
Well, the Hilltoppers need a good offensive, steady in possession right now, but they just seem... Yeah, look well, at it on a nice drive by yeah. Robinson, who's looked to get into the lane and is the leading Hilltopper with 10 here tonight. Another baseball pass, Hudgens over the top. Waters driving down the lane, oh. good left-hand finish. That's a strong drive there from the top of the paint. Hawkins almost got a hand on it for a steal. Robinson has been the instant offense. We'll get fouled there. He'll head to the line for a one and one, but first a timeout here. Northwest Missouri State looking the part of the two-time national champions pulling away here late in the first half and owning their largest lead of the night. Owning its largest lead of the night, Northwest Missouri State getting 25 combined points from the National Player of the Year announced last night in Trevor Hudgens. He's got 11. Ryan Hawkins with 14, nearly outscoring West Liberty. And the front end of the bonus wasted by Pat Robinson out of the timeout. Long throw up ahead. So again, the Bearcats finding success against this West Liberty pressure as Hudgens will settle things down. See the Hilltoppers switching up their defense now in a 2-3 zone. Just trying to change it up to see if they can throw the Bearcats out of rhythm, but that didn't have any impact whatsoever on Hudgens. Yeah, he just took it, it right down the middle. You pack in a zone to prevent mm -hmm. something like that yep. from happening, and Hudgens just kind of danced right through all the defenders. Normally a zone is all about forcing a team to shoot from the perimeter. Ben Sarson has no problem shooting from the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Three-pointer drops. But now I'm gonna sound like a broken record from the entire day for the team that's trailing. Can you get stops? You can score. West Liberty's made three straight field goals, but they've given up eight straight field goals. Make it nine in a row now. The Bearcats have put it in the basket. Alexander. Alexander scores it. We talked about how Hudgens got off to a quote-unquote slow start in this one, and he somehow has gotten to 13 points on five of seven shooting. You know, and the Bearcats are starting to score out of this press that the Hilltoppers are staying in. So that sting has kind of gone out of it now, so it'll be interesting to see if they decide to pull it off maybe in these last couple of minutes or if they're going to maintain that throughout the first half. If a bench warning was issued there by the officials for... Players who have been warned stand up and stay away from the court. I'm not sure which team got it. Alexander, bodies colliding. Bolin tripped up under the basket. I think Alexander's going to get called for it. That may have been incidental, but mm -hmm. it was such a violent fall to the floor from Dalton Bolin, who will go to the line now for one of the bonus. You can see the shot goes up, and Bolin really just kind of tripped over his own feet initially. I'm not sure if we'll see another replay, but... Yeah, he kind of discarded Alexander, and then as he stepped mm -hmm. through, I think Alexander kind of stepped backwards and just caught the toe as Bolin came through. So he's fortunate to get the benefit of the doubt on that call. And a chance for a couple of points here if he can convert on the front end of the bonus. I'm going to get another look at it here. You can see he's... Oh, he... Yeah, he tripped himself. Yeah. Definitely didn't... Uh, have Alexander in uh, in that play. They'll take the points. Bolin gets one of two. Dreamer's got to get it out of that trap. He does. Now there's numbers up ahead. Hawkins really wanted to fire it from the corner, but they'll preserve the possession. Mm -hmm. There's the zone again. We're in the zone, yep. I mean, Hudgens can shoot you out of his own as effectively as he's driven into it. Dreamer from the wing. Tipped up. No. Second chance. Third oh. chance as Alexander wins up and grabs it. You know, once that shot goes up, defense, you can't just turn and look at the rim. You've got to get a body. Get to that nearest player. Box him out. Go get the ball. Another three rains down from Sarson. Three points. One minute remains in the first 
And West Liberty's had no trouble finding offense over the last couple of minutes mm -hmm. for their last five from the floor. But the Bearcats, 10 of 12, both teams on a torrid pace. Northwest Missouri State shooting it at 64% here in the opening half. Hawkins keeps his team red hot with the triple. Hawkins with 17 points for the half. He got them going from at the beginning of the game. He's going to take it into half time. Dyer electing to burn a little bit of clock here, but they're going to have to put it up, and mm -hmm. the Bearcats are going to get at least one more look at the basket, you would think. Robinson driving at the D. A little shuffle step there, can't get it to go. And up comes the Bearcats. Hawkins takes one look at the clock, has time to reset. Dreamer's going to have to do something with it. Fade away three. Why no. not at the buzzer? The last person you would expect maybe to have his ball, the ball in his hands at the end of the half. And it's Wes Dreamer with the fadeaway three to punctuate the end of the half. A 6-0 spurt, a couple of threes in the final minute. And Northwest Missouri State, you blink, you miss it, a 19-point lead. Wow, that's how you go into the half with momentum. Back-to-back -back threes to finish the half out. It's an impressive performance from one of the best in the business. Reigning champions flexing some early muscle after a back and forth early affair. Close on a 6 nothing run. Their largest lead rests at the half. It's the Bearcats by 19. Location. Well, it feels like deja vu with the games that we've had so far today in this 2021 NCAA Division II men's basketball Elite Eight. Balanced teams on paper getting off the balanced starts, but then the higher seeded team just pulling away late in the first half. No different than it is right now. A 19 point game here at the break. Northwest Missouri State leading 51 32 over West Liberty. First game of the day, Lincoln Memorial and Colorado School of Mines got off to a tight start. And then Lincoln Memorial pulling away. Cameron Henry flexed some muscle in the first half, led a rail, spitters, uh, rail splitters run late in that first half. They never looked back. And the same thing could be said for West Texas AM. After a back and forth affair with Damon in our quarterfinal, it was JoJo Murray who was the difference maker. He used his athleticism en route to 31 points and a runaway win, 97 to 83. And Tully, we're seeing the same thing here for Northwest Missouri State. We had a few ties early in this game. West Liberty led through the first five or so minutes, but mm -hmm. a couple of big runs from Northwest Missouri State. Now 17 points from Ryan Hawkins. The big buckets down the stretch from Trevor Hutchins, the National Player of the Year. And Boom, you blink and the higher seated teams all of a sudden got a really cozy cushion with 20 minutes to go. Well, the Hilltoppers did a very good job at the beginning applying that pressure with their full court defense. They were also knocking their shots down, but then when their shots started to drop, the, uh, the Bearcats started to get through that full court pressure fairly easily and what they were doing was also scoring on the end of it as well and then you had Hudgens step up his game you had Hawkins in the first 10 minutes and then you had Hudgens come to life in the second 10 minutes so you know with that two-pronged attack and obviously the rest of the players playing um, complementary roles around them they played great team defense making the extra passes not taking forced shots but good shots there's no doubt about that. Northwest Missouri State, the number one shooting team in the country, 53.4% coming into this one, the best shooting team in the nation. How about 20 of 30 in that first half, 67% in route mm -hmm. to this 19-point lead. We'll take a look at some of the highlights, get you set for the second half here in Evansville. Northwest Missouri State in control of this one at the break on NCAA.com. Northwest Missouri State, a 19-point lead at the half. Both teams coming out to get loosened up for 
the second half, and West Liberty is going to have a mountain to climb because of the offensive onslaught from the first half, Tully Bevilacqua. It was first Ryan Hawkins. He leads the way with 17 points for all scorers, doing it as he always does, inside, outside, driving, taking advantage mm -hmm. of mismatches, and then not just uh, the outside shots for him, but then the threes started falling from everywhere. Trevor Hudgens got involved, messed around, and next thing you know, you had 19 points in uh, front yeah. of you with the West Liberty just trying to play catch up. Yeah, it just seemed to happen in the blink of the eye, but Hawkins showed he could play face to the basket, back to the basket, three-point shot. And then you had Hudgens here just probing that change of pace, kind of like lulling the defense into a false sense. And he just took over in that second half of the first half and did it quite, it, it just made it look easy. And of course, this was adding insult to injury at the end of the half with Dreamer stepping away and draining that three-pointer for that 19-point cushion. If you take just Hudgens and Hawkins, it'd be a 30 to 32 game. West Liberty would have a two point <laughs> lead, but everybody else pitching in a 19 point edge. And we'll see what the Hilltoppers do to try to adjust coming up in the second half. That second half comes your way right after this. Start of the second half between Northwest Missouri State and West Liberty. Now the question, can the Hilltoppers do what two other teams in their positions earlier today could not do? And that is whittle away a big margin in the second half. We have seen big leads that have held on all the way to the end. Lincoln Memorial pulled away late in the first half in their game against Colorado School of Mines and then won by 14. West Texas A&M won by 14 points as well, 97-83 over Damon, and the score not really as close as that game felt much in the second half. So I would ask you, Tully Bevilacqua, what does West Liberty have to do here in the opening few minutes of this second half to give them and their fans a realistic shot at coming back against the two-time national champion Bearcats? Well, like we spoke about in the two previous games, you've got to break it down. Set yourself some goals for the first two, three minutes. Chip away, get three stops in a row defensively, try and convert them on the offensive end. Driving to the basket, left-handed finish, Diego Bernard, who missed most of the first half with a couple of fouls. Didn't look like he was ever going to get control of that basketball, mm -hmm. but did just in time to make it a 21-point lead. I'm pretty sure this is how those other two games started as well with the team that's up coming out strong in the second half. Bolin drove into a double team. Great recognition and flips it across to Watson. Just a great cut to the basket there by Watson. Good vision by Bolin. Defenders colliding and Hawkins ahead of the pack, <laughs> able to collect and slam it home. Second slam of the day that we've seen. First one came from Cisco in the previous game. Bolin fouled by Alexander. But this is what happens with this pressure defense. You leave yourself exposed on the backside. You see two Hilltoppers colliding, and Hawkins won the sprint down the floor. Butler paying the ultimate price for trying to challenge. Well, they've been able to get that long baseball pass a couple of times now. So you know they're looking for it. So the defense has to be careful not to play on the high side too much. Ben Hallett asking a question about the inbounds. Bryce Butler with it. Bolin's going to get a crack at it from 17 feet and connects. Just his eighth points for Dalton Bolin. Leading scorer for this team at just under 22 a game. Needs to be a factor. Hudgens mm -hmm. splits the D and got fouled. The first foul, West Liberty, number 23, Pat. Yes, the Hilltoppers have yet to have a player reach double figures yet. They have three players who average double digits. Ben Howlett not happy with the call, thinking that touch foul really denies his team an opportunity to play this patented defense. Robertson, or should say, Alexander missing on the drive, but Hawkins comes out of there with the reset. Now, when you're behind by 19 points, you cannot afford to give second chance opportunities. 
Boy, how unselfish. All the way around the horn. Hawkins could have taken it himself. I should just say Hutchins mm -hmm. could have taken it himself. Found Hawkins instead in the corner, and he's got 22. This is a great team to watch. Very unselfish. They always, they're making that extra pass, and it's coming from your players of Hudgens and Hawkins who are doing that as well, even though they know that they can probably take one of those shots as we see Robinson connecting from beyond the three-point line, and they'll need more of that from him. Don't see many set shot three-pointers, but that's exactly what Robinson does. Mm -hmm. Hudgens working it across, breaks the press again. Too easy with two men back and Alexander with the easy layup. Yeah, I was waiting for them to cut off that sideline and make um, make Hudgens have to spin where they nearly had that trap set on the side, but he was able to get through that. A great save. Oh. And look at where this ends up. Hudgens able to come down, but didn't realize he had Dyer behind him who comes in to clean steal it. That no. wasted a great yep. effort from Bernard. That was a fantastic effort, but no communication from his teammates, obviously, to let him know. Robinson, the third. Robinson not three scared points. at all from the distance, mm -hmm. makes his second three of the half. And then... As we see this save here, look at that. A great flip back. There's that set shot that you're talking about. <laughs> the official with the three. I think looked over and issued another warning to a bench there. Press broken again. Mm -hmm. This is becoming too easy as yep. Waters gets the layup off the home run ball to Alexander to begin it all. Once again with that baseball pass resulting in points. Yeah, West Liberty's finding ways to score. Bernard fouled after he brought down the rebound, but on the defensive end, Northwest Missouri State, even better offensively here in the second half. They're five of six from the floor, so your West Liberty, you exploded for 10 points in the first three minutes and change, but you're still negative one on the scoreboard mm -hmm. because defensively, it's just too easy over the top of this pressure. Well, on that particular play right now, the coach did send one of the defenders to go and be back in the defensive side to cover that baseball pass. Well, the touchdown pass. Hawkins, great feed, patient and delivered at the waters. And again, the, the passing, the recognition of this team. They've made 26 shots in this game, 13 assists on those 26 made baskets. Defense caught sleeping on the weak side and Hawkins finding his teammates. That's going to be a foul. Yeah, McKinney mm -hmm. tried to come back down on top of Alexander after he dribbled it off a defender's foot. The There's three fouls here in the early going for West Liberty. Watch the patience here from Hawkins. And just see the players getting caught up, watching what Hawkins is doing, getting ready to go help, but they forget about where their own player is and just a good cut to the basket. Hudgens, given space, couldn't finish. Late whistle, though, he mm -hmm. was fouled, and I believe they're going to get Sarson with the contact. So Hudgens will have two free throws, but after he catches his breath in our first timeout of the second half. A 19-point lead has grown to 22 here in the early going. Northwest Missouri State maintaining control. Just methodical, patient at times, aggressive when they need to be play from the 2017 and 2019 national champions. Northwest Missouri State making its fifth Elite Eight appearance. Just a gaudy record under Ben McCollum in his 12th year now. Team that has won 40 straight games on neutral floors. 94 and three is their overall record the last three combined seasons. Again, they ran the table in that 2019 championship. Look at their shooting percentages at the moment. You can see why they're sitting with 66 points right now with over 15 minutes remaining in this second half. 70% from the field goal and over 54% from the three-point line, 100% from the free throw line. Just not wasting opportunities. Mm -hmm. Hawkins. Perfect Boom. example, another one. Yep. S five of them now from downtown. He's five of eight, give him 25 points. He leads all scorers 
as this game is getting out of hand early in the second half. Yeah, pick and pop right there. Hawkins setting the screen for Hudgens and just popping out to the three-point line. That misses short. Bernard skies for the board. And they will go to work again patiently on the offensive end. Hawkins dumps it over. Nice feed from Alexander. Once again, making the extra pass with that dribble penetration, just drawing two defenders and finding the open player. This is a very unselfish team. And an easy drive. Bolin able to get it in. And there was contact with Marlon Moore, mm -hmm. asking if he's OK. Appears to be so. Moore will depart. And they'll just keep an extra eye on him and allows fresh legs to come in. Again, West Liberty will typically substitute whole lineups in to keep fresh legs in this pressure system that Hudgens has no problem with mm -hmm. and will now value time and the ball. Oh, good penetration, drawing the defense, and look who's in that corner again for that three ball. Again, the extra pass. Oh, wow, he is on fire, Hawkins, right now with 30 points, six of eight from beyond the arc. Bolin nearly missed the iron. And it's how wide open he is, too. It's, mm -hmm. They beat the pressure again. That'll be a hard foul as Sarson fouling Alexander in a 30-point game. Remember, this is a Northwest Missouri State team that began this NCAA tournament with a 41-point win. Let's take a look at the great ball movement, mm -hmm. the unselfishness, and finding Hawkins open in the corner against a Washburn team that beat him twice this year. Their only two losses in 27 games came against Washburn. And then in the first round of the NCAA tournament, or the first game of the NCAA tournament, I should say, beat him 85-44. It was just the 15th time in Division II tournament history that there was a 40-point margin of victory. And now a 30-point edge for the Bearcats with a lot of time left in this one. You know, what I like is the fact that you know, Hawkins has the hot hand, so they are looking for him. And even though someone may have an open shot, if they know that Hawkins is open like in that extra pass in that corner, get it to him who's shooting the ball extremely well. That's what you, that's unselfish play right there. Hawkins called for the foul his second. And Butler with a couple of free throws now on the West Liberty side. First ever meeting between these two storied programs and again, I'm just going to, given how schedules play out each and every year, really the only likelihood that you're going to see one another is in an NCAA tournament type of matchup. There are a couple of preseason tournaments where you can typically put players and great teams together. Hawkins, wild save. Somehow Bernard came away with it, draws through the defense. And Hudgens will patiently wait for the offense to develop. I don't know how they still have possession of this basketball after <laughs> a couple of wild times down the other end. Cross quarter. Dreamer missed. Just the second meeting ever between a West Liberty program and a team from the MIAA as well. Dead on three by Butler is pure. Again, there's 13 minutes left in this game. I mean, you're a 100-point scoring team. You can certainly do crazy things, but you just don't see any let up from the offense of Northwest Missouri State shooting it at a ridiculous 82% here in the second half. That and then just gets you've better. got, yeah. Then you give up a, a, a drive to Hudgens like that. He just that change of speed is catching his defensive players off guard. But the Hilltoppers just unable to string together two, three possessions of getting stops and being able to score on the other end, just to try and make a, an indent into this margin right now. And Hudgens patiently drawing the defense, but then got a little bit too creative trying to mm -hmm. hit Bernard in stride. Both teams have turned it over seven times apiece. But how about this one? Northwest Missouri State, now granted, they're not giving West Liberty a lot of rebounding attempts. They're controlling the glass right now, 27 to 10. Butler threw everybody and is able to lay it in. One of the rare breakdowns defensively. 
for the Bearcats. So there was no help defense there. And there we go. We get a, a stop. Maybe this will get the Hilltoppers going, get a little momentum. It's a basketball game with football plays in it right now with that home run ball to beat the pressure as Robinson thought he was fouled but still mm -hmm. got the layup in. They just have to make sure on this defensive full court press that they're still applying as we see a good deflection there but they don't give up that long pass for the easy two on the other end. Hilltoppers certainly aren't going anywhere, forcing a couple of quick turnovers, gotten it back to 25 after the lead swelled to as many as 30 here in the second half. High flying offense, you're never out of it when you can put points on the board. That's what West Liberty is hoping for here midway through the second half. Northwest Missouri State already has hit 100 twice in this postseason. Both of them come in the MIAA tournament, a tournament in which they lost 69 68 at the end of it to Washburn and avenged it a couple of days later. Can you imagine, I, remember I was hosting the selection show and you have to imagine the reaction from all the great folks at the Ichabods. And Washburn's name gets announced and you know that you're going to have a path and Northwest Missouri State's going to be right in the middle of that pathway as Washburn was the three seed in the central, took care of Missouri Western and then had a rested Bearcat team waiting for them in the second round. And it was an absolute bludgeoning, 85 to 44 as Waters is called for the personal. And a little spurt here from West Liberty. They forced three turnovers in the mm -hmm. last 90 seconds against the Bearcats, but nearly flawless basketball is likely required the final 11 minutes if the Hilltoppers are gonna come all the way back. Yes, they've got to take care of the basketball. They've got to knock down some of those outside shots and then defend on the other end without giving up any any points. So doable, yes, probable, <laughs> anything is possible. Really, if you're Northwest Missouri State, patience isn't what isn't your friend right now. You, you slow down for a second, and all of a sudden you've got two black jerseys just mm -hmm. hounding you. Maintaining that early pace might be the easiest way to just kind of put this game away instead of just trying to burn clock. That one deflected in the air. Robinson came away with it. Butler got it underneath. And, all right, a 30-point game nope. down to 23. Bearcats just getting a little sloppy at the moment with the ball when they're passing. But credit to the Hilltoppers there. They've picked up that defensive intensity now, getting some deflections. Bernard decided... Enough mm -hmm. with this slowing the ball down. Let's just attack right to the rim, and Diego Bernard's going to head to the line for a couple. As you can see, yeah. yeah. West Liberty, I mean, they're going to find ways to turn you over and, and get buckets. They forced now, you mentioned those four turnovers in the last 243, 10 turnovers in total for the Bearcats. Well, they've got just over 10 minutes left in this game to try and claw their way back. Like we said, just don't look at the end. You've got to break it down minute by minute, play by play. If they can force another couple of turnovers here, just to get some of that momentum back and get the energy back. That should be an illegal screen, and it is. Owen. Hazel Baker slid into the body, or yeah. <laughs> so before that three-point attempt, that's the seventh foul on West Liberty. That obviously player controlled, so it won't result in free throws. But the Bearcats, who are one of the best, 80% free throw shooting team this season, can play into their favor against this aggressive defense. Hudgens lost well, it, nice last yeah. touched it. Dye just fouled. got it, yeah. Well, Dye just got the deflection, and like I said, sometimes a deflection can actually lead to another deflection by the offensive play. It just disrupts them. Dyer driving, discarding, couldn't get the roll. 
A rare offensive rebound for West Liberty. Robinson forcing his way through under Waters. The ball pinballs into the Bearcats' hand. Out comes Alexander with it running. Yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive when you're up big. You want to conserve energy. You just want to kind of milk this clock mm -hmm. down here late in the second half. But again, standing around is just not offensively what needs to happen. I say that Bernard steps yeah. back and drills the triple. But no, you're exactly right. Prior to that, I mean, the success had come from pushing the ball, attacking. Speaking of the attack, Moore fouled on the attack on the opposite end. He's got two free throws coming. Um, as we can see here, just that nice step back, getting that separation then from Robinson, who is defending him on the perimeter. But Robinson is someone that is not going to stop attacking for the Hilltoppers. First free throw is good for Marlon Moore Jr., senior from Cleveland, Ohio. West Liberty substitution number one, Malik McKinney. Now the pressure mm -hmm. will pick back up. Bernard's looked deep several times. He's going to do it again, looking for Hawkins. Uses that tall frame to go up and grab it, and then got fouled. And Moore comes to make sure he's okay. Yes, we've seen this a number of times throughout the game, the long pass. Now it's that fine line of, yes, you need to be aggressive defensively because you need to create the stops to try and reduce this deficit, but at the same time, Every foul now is going to result in free throws. And we still got nine minutes of the game to play. Walken, uh, Ryan Hawkins has 32. His career high came a season ago when he had 44 against Southern Nazarene. But he's shown it all off here today. Mm -hmm. Saves that one back in. His season high in case you're wondering, is 34. He's done it twice this year, so could very easily set a new season best in this performance here tonight. Waters, double is coming. McKinney threatening it, looking for an outlet. Instead of just kind of doing something with the basketball himself, was desperately trying to find someone to pass to, last touched by the Hilltoppers. Well, he had the mismatch. He had Dyer on him, 5'11". Waters at six foot six, so he had the mismatch. You could see the defense trying to scooping over there to help out Dyer, but he didn't just turn the ball over. Hawkins couldn't get the friendly roll. Alexander came out with it. And a travel on Bernard. Always a perfectionist. Ben McCollum over on the sideline is not overly pleased with the lack of focus from the Bearcats, a couple of turnovers, a little sloppy with the ball, not mm -hmm. as tight here, but comfortably ahead. You can sort of understand the human element of it as that one ripped away. I believe they're going to get Hudgens for the reach-in foul. And that is the case. That's the fifth foul against the Bearcats here in the half. Well, they have 12 turnovers now, and probably three or four of those have come in the last few minutes just with Sloppy passing, lack of focus. Bolin gets the friendly roll. Dalton Bolin. And a five second call. You could hear the crowd trying to help mm -hmm. out the officiating crew. They started the count a little <laughs> bit early before. Bernard yep. had picked up the ball, but a five-second violation is turnover number 13 for Northwest Missouri State. Moore turns to face. Tough shot, but rises oh, from 17 to connect. Moore, Rough bounce pass there, but Hudgens is able to run it down. He's getting a body full all the way down the oh, court the and lays it up and in. Yeah. But it sort of feels like that's what they have to do. Getting stuck in the half court set mm -hmm. hasn't been successful. Just go for the press break and get your points. More from three. Bodies colliding, and we're going to go the other way for free throws as Bolin bodying in the way of Bernard. 
Things getting a little chippy out there on the court as well between these two teams. A lot of sweat on the court, body bruises. But perhaps the team the most bruised right now, that one that's down 25 as we head to a break here late in the second half in Northwest Missouri State starting to make semifinal plans. All Bearcats in this third quarter final showdown with West Texas A&M, Lincoln Memorial on one side of the bracket already in the semifinals tomorrow. Flagler and Truman waiting in the wings for the nightcap here from Evansville with Tully Bevilacqua, I'm Will Haskett. That's Diego Bernard at the free throw line. One plus the bonus for the Bearcats and he earns it. Bernard now with nine, a chance to become the fifth different Bearcat to reach double figure scoring here today. And will Northwest Missouri State set a new scoring mark for the season there? High before this was 104 against Central Oklahoma. They got seven and a half minutes to score 20 more points. Well, Bernardo has been very efficient in his 15 minutes on court. As we see move. a tough basket there by McKinney. Splitting the defense, finishing on the reverse. But Bernardi's three from three from the field, one of one from three point range. Has just missed the one free throw to blemish that stat line right now. And they're going back to just slowing it down offensively. We've, we've talked about how we felt like they became a little sloppy when they did slow things down. But on that particular occasion, Bernard once again just getting it done. But he's also been a great defender as well, making it tough. Yeah, defensive player mm -hmm. of the year in the MIAA. Yep. Got in the way of McKinney there. And now bounces across Alexander. Waters scooped it up and under and got fouled. He'll head to the line. Time to start looking at the record book, Tully, because Northwest Missouri State is shooting it 70.2% from the mm -hmm. floor. They are 33 of 47. The record in the Elite Eight or beyond in the history of this Division II tournament is 69.4% in a game. That was Northeastern State and a win over Nebraska Kearney back in the quarterfinals in 2003. They were 34 of 49. So again, high volume shooting in this game, mm -hmm. but right now on pace, if they were to maintain this shooting to be the best offensive performance in the Division II Elite Eight in history, or at least from when we have records. Mm -hmm. Couple of points at the free throw line. That one rolls in on the other side for Sarson and a chance at a three point play. Sarson doing a good job then, attacking off the dribble, getting to the middle of the keyway. Defense giving up middle penetration, which is not what you want to see. Really breaks the defense down, and now he's going to earn himself the bonus. Bernard tried to go up to get it. Couldn't corral the rebound, so the ball stays on this end. They lob over the top, and Hawkins commits the foul. Good design play to Bryce mm -hmm. Butler there. and He'll head to the free throw line. Yeah, the old lob pass, Butler catching and shooting in one motion. The Bearcats so far have only gone seven deep to the bench for Ben McCollum's squad. The semifinal looming tomorrow. You wonder how much longer you'll keep your best players out there, but it's been a unit that's been so tight, so strong, so good together, especially mm -hmm. through this postseason. It's been an, an odd scheduling year, not necessarily back-to-back -back game days. This will be the first time Moore, if this score were to hold, then Northwest Missouri State will have played back-to-back -back games pretty much all season, typically with a day off in between. Well, and both Hudgens and Hawkins have been out there the entirety of this game. So, like you said, will the coach at some point pull them out and rest those legs? Side 10 to shoot. Hudgens looking for an outlet. 
Worked his way down the lane. Wild drive, bounces off the rim. Burned some clock on that possession, but couldn't get it to go. Bolin through four defenders, left it off for Moore in good hesitation. Nice hesitation. Defense just flying by. We're just keeping our eye on that shooting percentage record right now. Obviously, with that miss by the Bearcats earlier, they've now dipped under 69%. Alexander was fortunate to still have that one. McKinney nearly got the steal, and it'll send Byron Alexander to the line. West Liberty, number 13, Marlon Moore, Jr., fourth personal. Two free you see that hesitation Missouri. right there. Defense just assuming he was going to go straight up for the, for the bucket. Talked about offensive efficiency for Northwest Missouri State. You could almost say that Byron Alexander's been as inefficient as he could be today. He's Four of seven, you say, well, mm -hmm. how, how bad is that? Well, he had made all 10 of his shot attempts in this NCAA tournament coming in. In fact, he'd made 19 straight overall coming into tonight's game and was shooting a ridiculous 79% from the floor this season. So just four of seven, more pedestrian for Alexander tonight, who affected that shot by Bolin and the rebound down and into the hands now of Bernard. Good hesitation, missed the layup. Waters, though, with the reset. So much for record-setting uh, offensive yeah. pace. A couple of misses now, and that yep. percentage will dip down underneath 68%. I'm, so sure. Those, I'm sure people watching anxiously, hoping to see some sort of offensive record. Hudgens is going to at least keep fans out there at Northeastern State a little bit happier that it appears their record is going to stay intact. Mm -hmm. McKinney steps into one. Rebound follow no good. Both teams really resigned to the fate of this final game, but Bernard bumped by Sarson. And the Bearcats are going to go back to the free throw line again. Well, maybe they, well, they've dipped now down to 66%, but what is achievable is that 100 point mark. They got plenty of time to get to that. Yeah, a team that averaged 82.6 points per game this year. But if you like the advanced metrics, the analytics for Northwest Missouri State, they led the country in points per possession, 1.12 mm -hmm. points per trip down the floor for the top shooting team in the country. And we've seen that efficiency on display tonight, not just the shooting percentage. I have to go back at the end of the game and really look at what that possession tally was, but they have made the most of their many opportunities against this West Liberty full court defense that at some point hasn't been very defensive at all. Oh, and that's a no. rough fall. Alexander came down awkwardly after colliding midair on his left leg. And again, we've seen so many of these midair mm -hmm. jumps and the long passes and Alexander in noticeable pain on the floor. This is just always the concern in these back and forth, these long games, and these two teams have gotten you know, pretty chippy flying at the basketball. And uh, This is just a, an awful situation for the Bearcats with this game in hand and now watching Byron Alexander in pain with that left leg. Oh, your heart just sinks. I wasn't quite sure it. if he was grabbing his calf muscle. Like, it was hard to tell if it was ankle or... Um. Yeah, you hope it's a... You come down and maybe tighten the leg mm -hmm. and it's a cramp with all the running back and forth, but yeah. he was immediately down in some pretty serious pain and unable to... He's put, not, not putting any pressure on that at all. The officials are taking another look at this one. Oh, you Ooh. see the back of his foot mm. buckle and... Oh. That is an awful blow with your heart and hustle mm -hmm. freshman from Kansas City, Missouri. Well, just and the already, energy. And already a, a yep. limited roster. We just mentioned only seven mm -hmm. players seeing the court tonight for the Bearcats. So what does that do to the rotation? I mean, who really cares about the rest of the tonight, but... Moving yeah. forward for that man. Now Ben McCollum's going to have to go a little bit deeper into the bench to put the right pieces out there. 
Oh, it just gives you a sick, a sick feeling in your stomach when you see that happen. We see the attention there on the sideline. Another freshman, Isaiah Jackson, will sub in and take the free throws for Alexander. The personal foul, West Liberty, number 23. Pat Robinson the third is third personal. Robinson called for the foul, and it is a just a common foul. I don't think mm -hmm. there's there was certainly no ill intent or negative intent there. So again, it's Jackson comes in, but with an injury, the Hilltoppers have the opportunity to select who they want shooting the free throws. So they elect Luke Waters to go to the line, a 78% free throw shooter. Well, with just over four minutes to go, and you've got Hudgens and Hawkins who have played the entire game. You wonder as we... And now what do we have? Technical? technical. And they get Diego Bernard called for a technical. I don't know if that was some bickering with somebody for West Liberty or... Malik Fired up the mm -hmm. junior leader. Again, we mentioned he, well, even with a lopsided score that this was a game that just kind of felt like it had a little bit of extra energy, a little bit of malice still mm -hmm. out there with both of these teams, you know, fighting for possession. There have been some scrappy plays, loose balls on the floor, all of this pressure, and still a highly emotional and volatile situation out there, even with the result in hand. And, Got a lot of starters with a lot of pride out there, and now Bernard has to mind himself. That makes me wonder how, how many more minutes will the coach leave his starters out there? There's Robinson for three, rimmed it out. Knocked out of bounds, last touch by Elijah Watson. Continuing on with this full court press. They're not easing up on the defensive end. They're going to make the Bearcats work all the way down to the very end of the game. Pull it out. Under four to go. Again, with the injury to Byron Alexander, it probably slows this mm -hmm. offense even more so for the Bearcats. That fear in the back of your mind, having seen your teammate go down in a Nasty collision. Hudgens through the defense, had it blocked, and he was fouled. The Bearcats are just going to milk the, the clock down now. As we see a lot of substitutions coming in for the Hilltoppers. And they'll officially get in after the timeout. Hudgens with two free throws on the backside of this break. Back for perhaps the final time, Northwest Missouri State used a 13-0 run in the first half to pull away in this game. They have not looked back. Last time, West Liberty led all the way back 12-10 in the about seven minutes into the mm -hmm. first half, and then the Bearcats taking control of this game. Trevor Hudgens with 21 now for the All-American and NABC Player of the Year. Complete line change for West mm -hmm. Liberty at that last timeout. And starters back on the floor. Butler looking for room in the post. Muscles it through Waters, couldn't get it to go. Fights for it again, and the rebound hauled down by Hawkins. Sweet. This time we see Hudgens pushing the ball down the floor, but he's content to just bring it back out and attack again. Trevor Hudgens. And now these baskets, you know, just really adding to whatever the final tally might be, but that was kind of the story of the first half for those mm -hmm. that may be joining us late in this one and how Northwest Missouri State pulled away from this one in that first half was all of a sudden the pressure a little bit easier to be broken and Hudgens and company found those driving lanes. It opened everything up, threes were dropping. And the offense just fully in rhythm for a team that is shooting at 67% from the floor here today. 
Dyer with his foot on the line, knocks in the, the two-pointer. It's fair to say that all three games that we've watched today have... Pretty much the same script. Pretty, yep. Higher seeded team pulling away midway through the first half mm -hmm. and then just having the weapons that the opposition just couldn't defend. Obviously great offenses, great strong coach teams, wonderful championship quality caliber programs, but the inefficiency of other teams to be able to stop them as much of the story as the offensive efficiencies themselves. West Liberty just too many openings, too many gaps allowed here today against the Bearcats. And it will end the Hilltopper season. Bolin rises and connects for three. That's his 15th point for the fifth year senior. And a timeout called to get some quick substitutions in, but that timeout will go full as it looks as if Bolin has exited for the final time in this great career. We'll step aside as well. Northwest Missouri State about to put the cherry on top of this one with just 97 seconds left. Northwest Missouri State putting the finishing touches on a quarterfinal win. Sixth Elite Eight appearance for the Hilltoppers were not result in a Another trip to the semifinals for perhaps the championship game where they came oh so close. One win away from a title back in 2014. And after a long two year wait to get back to this stage to defend the title from 2019, the Bearcats will get one step closer here this evening. Long three missing from Lang, but the rebound kicked out and a reset for the Bearcats. Both teams have cleared their benches now. One minute remains in second half action. One minute. So we're down to less than a minute to play. First half ended on a three from West Dreamer. Couldn't connect there. And the Hilltoppers will bring it up. All the seniors have been subbed out mm -hmm. for West Liberty getting a nice round of applause from the faithful that traveled west to watch perhaps their final game as Bryce Butler spins to the hoop. And they'll just have a quick timeout to allow substitutes to come in and get a few youngsters into the box score in this national semifinal. But it'll be Northwest Missouri State advancing to the semifinals tomorrow. Flagler and Truman will do battle in about an hour from right now to determine who will be facing the Bearcats for another spot in the national championship game. Champs showed like they have no interest in giving that trophy back here today, Tully. Nope, nope, they have had a taste of it. They don't want to give it back. And they've put on a performance here tonight. Just a, a great overall team performance, a very unselfish team. The leaders leading by example. So the final, after a 51-point first half, it ends up being a 62% shooting performance for Northwest Missouri State. They actually missed seven of their last eight shots from the floor in their attempt to get to 100, but it did not matter. They win going away and proved to anybody that maybe questioned if they should have had the one seed or the two seed that, man, they would love to meet West Texas A&M in a championship to prove who truly was the best team here this week in Evansville. Season ends for the Hilltoppers, but Another year, another semifinal performance for Northwest Missouri State as Tully were three quarters of the way to determining our semifinals. We're nearly there, Will. We've got one more. We've got enough fuel in the tank ourselves, so <laughs> let's get it done. It'll be Flagler and Truman coming up in about an hour's time. Well, we have a close game, another blowout here as the Bearcats advance to the semifinals. <laughs> 